Hello, Ash. How are you doing? I'm OK. How are you? I'm good. Are you at work? You at home? Yeah, I'm working from home today. You maybe want to get some, some tickets, because I'll be staying in Athens for two more years. I'm over the moon. I'm sure porn will be so excited. So, uh, I can't wait to visit. So I still have to tell mom. I still have to tell Dave. Still have to tell Josh, everybody. But I'm pretty sure everybody will be excited. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy. I'm happy. It's crazy, but I'm happy. I'll let you get back to work. I'll let you get back to work, and um, we'll talk soon. Okay. Okay, sounds good. Love you. All right, love you too. 532, you're assigned to a vandalism. Jail was, it, it depends, you know. I've been to about six or seven jails in my life, all in all in the state of Washington, well, one in Indiana, but like, just like the movies. You got a lot of downtime in jail. It's just you and your cellmate in jail. Um, you have one officer that tells you everything you can do in jail. It's the bottom of the bottom. Everybody kind of has that time in their lives where they just kind of need to get it out. And so I thought that was kind of the start of it, but um, it went a little longer and it got a little more serious, I think, than I expected. And so it was scary. It was a real scary time. I think he was, I don't know, I guess I thought at a time he was at the point of no return. So it was hard. That really shaped me into the man I am today because you learn discipline and you learn how to have a hunger. You develop a hunger that I never had before going into jail. And I'm not glorifying, you know, my time in jail, but I could say that, you know, that helped, that definitely helped shape me into the man I am today. Man, working at Pizza Hut, you know, that was like one of my only real jobs, Pizza Hut. Once I, I lost that job, we got evicted for not paying rent at the first home. And then from there, as you know, we were, we were sleeping in cars. But I mean, sleeping in a car, when you're there with your best friend, it's not as bad as one would think. You know, it's like, we're all we have. We can laugh all day with each other, but we're gonna figure this out together. And we literally did that for about two straight years of just not knowing we're gonna live. And still to this day, like, it took me, like, before I got married, the most comfortable place I would sleep for like the first four years in Europe was just on the couch. I would never sleep in a room just because it was just so familiar to me. Yeah, Devin, that's uh, everything I have today is because of him. You know, single-handedly, without a doubt, like my mom's ambition can only get me so far. You know, me wanting a better life for my family can only get me so far. But if you, in my opinion, if you don't have that switch that just hits, and I don't even like calling it a switch, but I tell most people, like, for their trajectory to be a better person or have a better life is usually something extremely traumatic that has to happen. I went out that night um, to celebrate Halloween just like, uh, you know, millions of kids across America did. During the course of the night, my best friend, Laurent Daniel, gets a phone call. And then when I looked over at him, you know, um, his, his whole expression changed. He said, it's Devin. And I'm just like, OK, what with Devin? And he was like, they say Devin died. I don't feel like it's, it's fair to me to have so much success because something as ugly as that has driven me to this point. You know, with everything that I do, it's for number 40. I'm doing what I want to do in my life. And you know, that's, I owe a lot of that to Devin's death. And 
I know he's proud of me, and that's why I don't seek their pool for anybody else with anything that I do. So, I mean, I'm, I'm happy where I'm at. And if, 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 if I could say one thing to Devin right now, it'd just be thank you, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Or would we ever consider just staying in Europe and living here? I don't know. I just feel like, I feel like we have to think about it now. I don't know if like our life is this way because we play basketball and we're in this basketball bubble of like life. Um, would it be different? Like, would it be, would life be different if I wasn't a basketball player? You know, would our life be different? Would it be, you know, um, just different? I'm talking about the bigger picture. I'm talking about safety. I'm talking about the things that are happening back home. Yeah. I'm talking about gun control, schools, education. I mean, even talking to some of the girls and being on a trip, um, like some of them are even considered staying overseas. You yeah. know, more, I mean, yeah. more American players are thinking about making yeah, their more. lives after basketball still in Europe. I mean, and I feel like that's never yeah. happened before. No. I feel like it's never really been a conversation that people had to have before. So Would you like, guys want to live here forever? No? You, you want to live in both places? You want to live in both places. You want dad dad to play until he's 50? No. <laughs> yeah, me either. Both. Both? Can you do yeah. in here? I mean, what, Anya's six, about to be seven? We spent seven years, legitimately seven yeah. years overseas. Yeah. Like, we built our family on this European lifestyle. I mean, we are more... You know, this more, European culture. Yeah. We're more European than we are American, like our mentality now, because we've been over here for so long. I mean, especially me, I've been over 15 years, so... Yeah, I know. I spend more time here in Europe than I actually do at home. But also, then, around the holidays, it makes us feel like... We're missing stuff. Like just talking to our friends now no. and talking to my brother and your sister. I know, baby, oh. like babies, babies yeah. are coming. Yeah. And you must admit that first week when we, that first, that first week when we get home. It's exciting. It feels good to be like yeah. in our house, you know, like, <laughs> right, Cash? So, I don't know. I don't know. Time will tell. We'll see. Hey, Mom. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Just talking. I was talking to Jana about, you know, the summer and talking about us coming home and everything. And just talking about how we uh, look forward to seeing you guys and the, the dogs and Mr. C and everybody and seeing everything you guys got going on there. You know, well, that's the highlight of my summer when you come home. That's when yeah. summer starts. Yeah, that's, a, that's what everybody says, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I miss my boy. Yeah, yeah. Always a busy and, and short summer, unfortunately. I know, I know. It's like it, you're home for such a short period of time, and but it's uh, packed with so many activities, you know, and then next thing I know, then you're whisked off the way again. Yeah, yeah. Make sure the business. And when we decided as a family that Kyle was going to go to Europe and play, I researched and I knew it was the best opportunity for Kyle to get to travel. And also, you know, to see the world, to get out of Sicklerville and uh, to be able to explore. Funny. First, I was worried. I didn't understand really, you know, how different the culture would be for him over there. Um, but, you know, Kyle's amazing because he was accepted and loved and I didn't have to worry as much. Yeah, yeah, well, well, I love you. Just wanted to call you, just wanted to talk to you. Yeah, I just it want to talk to you. It was great seeing your faces always. Always, I miss always. You. I miss you too. I'll be seeing you, seeing you very soon. I will. All, All right. right. Bye. 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 Um, you know, when when college is finished, it's it's kind of like you know that I guess you could say that that fork in the road where you have to kind of make a decision, um, what you want to be and where you want to go. So I mean, basically, the story goes is that you know I was in summer league, um, and then the the general manager of the assistant general manager of the Cleveland Cavaliers. Um, introduced me to this coach, this guy, Andrea. I literally just kind of almost like fall in love with this man. He starts talking about all these different things that he thinks that I can do and the things that I can accomplish. Right there from that moment, um, you know, I was like, man, I'm, I'm going overseas. 
I literally probably went overseas. I had probably $15 in my bank account. I had two bags packed of everything because I didn't know what to bring and what not to bring. Um, and first time in my life that I was really by myself, not knowing anything, not knowing the language, not knowing the culture, not knowing what to do. Um, I really didn't have any guidance. And I'm 21 years old. At first, it was very difficult, very, very difficult. And, you know, I was, for the, for the first moments, I was definitely very homesick. I took the decision to play overseas. It was really easy. When I got offered my first contract versus no money to play in summer league, I automatically knew which one I was gonna take. I had a son on the way at the time, so I took the guaranteed money. And I'm comfortable, I'm extremely happy with my decision. I'm able to have family time, I'm able to do my own creative things off the court. For me, I, I feel like I made the right decision. I left Italy to go play in South Korea. Culture shock. I'm trying to find the words to explain it, but it was just so foreign to me. You walk into a McDonald's and there's no clerks. Everything is computer. And this is, you know, this point, this is seven years ago. I'm like, oh my God, like they're so techno technologically advanced over here. I'm like, wow, and I love it. But I'm just like, everything, you go into their malls, it's crazy, it's huge. Every place is clean. Um, and then Turkey, you know, can never really put it into words how appreciative I am of Turkey. You know, my wife is Turkish, my son is half Turkish. Um, you know, that's always gonna hold a special place in my heart. For me, when I go to Italy, I'm Italian. <laughs> when I go to Turkey, I'm Turkish. That's just how I am, you know, I wanna fit in. That's a fact. Trying to see something quick. Yeah, I feel like I'm. I just get them. Y'all got margaritas here? Y'all got margaritas? Margarita cocktail? Yeah. No salt. No salt. No salt. And I'll take one with salt. With salt? Yes. So one with no salt? Yes, that's fine. So, yeah, I would I would say, like, me having my family out here, like my wife and my son, that's probably, like, the highlight because I can see them if I have a good game, if I have a bad game, I get to chill with them and kind of take my mind off of it. That's what keeps me sane, so I know it's tough for guys that have families and then they gotta go home for various reasons and not be here, yeah. you know, for whatever reason. I know it's tough. I had the opportunity to kind of, you know, try it out. My first year over here, you know, my family stayed home. I wanted to take my first season to try to, you know, get the experience, see how, how it is to move, how it is to, um, you know, just live over here before I, you know, brought Sign them from that country, yeah. yeah. Yes. Thank you, thank you. In Turkey, we didn't even get off the plane and I was petrified. I was shook. <laughs> and then you fast forward five years later, my wife is Turkish. I was able to go to Turkey, embrace the culture, right. you know, um, and, and, and just discover other things that are so much diverse in the States. Right. But how would you feel like uh, that your experience was in China? I must have had something that my stomach didn't really agree with. Disagree so with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm telling them, I'm like, yo, I need to go to the bathroom. Yeah. Like, this is serious. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm like, all right, I'm out. So <laughs> I run, I run to the bathroom. I get in there, there's no, not one toilet in sight. Just holes in the floor. And I'm like, hey, yo, <laughs> am I in the right spot? They like, you're there. <laughs> So I literally stood there with my stomach in knots, like, how do this work? How am I supposed to do this? You know what I mean? So, um, well, let's make a toast to us winning EuroLeague this year. It's about that time, huh? That's so, why I came here. Yeah, that's a fact. You know, all the hard work we put into this season, you know, great experiences, you know, great relationships, and um, hopefully we can finish off the right way. Say less. Yep. Is it your apartment? Well, not there. Where are they? Oh, let's reach out.
when I got back here, there was a notice on the door um, saying that the electricity is off. You know, I haven't been there in eight weeks, so this is the life that, you know, that we have. Uh, being overseas sometimes, being away. There is where I honestly, where I think I really experienced like my first real overseas experiences because, you know, living in Moscow, Russia is kind of totally different. Do you, Kyle, recognize the places? Of course, man. It's like Moscow is like my second home. Just about, I mean, I've been here. This will be my fifth year, so mm -hmm. um, I know everywhere. I feel like just about now, I feel comfortable here. You know, coming here, like, you know, before, like, I mean, my first time I can remember, I was almost like, like, where is everything? But now it's like, you know, it feels, it feels like home to me. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Celia. Happy birthday. We are in the car. Anya, say hi. Where are we going? We're headed to the airport. And guess who's coming with us? Mama Smith. Russia, here we come. Well, we made it to Moscow. It wasn't the best flight, meaning Anya didn't sleep. Yeah, but we got here safe in town. Is this where the luggage is coming in? Uh, and look who we found. Anya, Say hi, Dada. <laughs> yeah, she didn't sleep on a plane. In Moscow, like, because I didn't know what to expect. You know, I was completely, you know, um, open to everything. I was able to do a lot of different things and experience a lot of different things. And then also just with the culture within our team, you know, we did a lot of stuff together. So we would have Halloween parties, Christmas parties. I was able to kind of experience, you know, so many other different things. Like I was going to UFC matches. I had an opportunity to play in a movie. You know, I was there, I had an acting, I was like a, a real life actor. I had a trailer, I was on set, I had scripts, I had lines um, and everything. Like I was like, to this day, like I'm in a Russian movie. When we go back and we talk about, you know, when I was, didn't get drafted and, you know, I was 21 and I was you know, literally sitting on my step crying, I never would have thought that. It was so important for me to go over to Russia to see Kyle. So I got on that plane and I went to Moscow and what a beautiful city, what beautiful warm people. Everything was just absolutely amazing. And when I left, I knew that my son was protected. I knew he was loved. I knew that my grandchildren would be taken care of and his wife. I had no more worries. As a matter of fact, I couldn't wait to get back. Okay. With playing overseas basketball, there's also, you know, some sacrifices that you have to make. And part of those sacrifices is family. You know, my son Justin, you know, was born and, and I missed the birth because you know, I was playing basketball, you know, I was overseas. One, two, three, four, five. 
Okay, ready? Push, push, push. Okay. push. One, two, three, two, three four. So, you know, I had to, you know, watch, you know, my son's, um, you know, birth um, on FaceTime, you know, me sitting in the living room, um, you know, and, and watching his birth. No. Oh, I think I'm liking Justin too. Daddy, it's your decision. Oh. oh. <laughs> Justin. Um, I think a lot of people, when they look from the outside in, they might think, oh, yeah, you know, Kyle wasn't there for the birth of Justin. Um, that had to be really difficult on you. You know, you spent a lot of time in New Jersey during that time with two kids, and Kyle was all the way in Russia. Yeah, but at the same time, it's like, that's what family's for. We had our support system, so I think we were okay there. All right, guys. Love you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Love you. And then can I do the the gusto lungo? Yeah. yeah. Like starter? Yeah, like starters to share. And yeah. salad. Yeah. How do you say it? Papa frites? How do you say it? Batatine frites. Batatine. 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 Like batatine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We all chase that dream, like the dream to play at the highest level. And even like when you overseas, like you always think about like I'm trying to get back. I'm trying to. So when it's especially for you, when was the point where you was like, like I'm cool with being over here. Like if this is the way my career is gonna go, like I'm not even trying to chase the league no more. I'm just trying to just chase like whatever the best opportunity is. Like when did that happen for you? After 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 playing in Barca, yeah. uh, you know I had a great year in Barca and um, um, I was like, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it one more chance. Yeah. And then like I played in the G League, and then it was just like. Business decisions, man. Like right opportunities. Like they teams like you. You kill it in the in the summer league, and they still not. You know, I'm like, all right. You know what? I'm gonna have NBA give me from Europe. Yeah. It's teams. I'm turning down money. Just trying to follow this dream. So I was like, you know what? They're gonna have to give me from Europe, and then you know, big teams start calling me an opportunity. I just said they're gonna have to just give me from over here. What is like the negative? Like what is like the the fallback? He was like, man, like this is, like this is. It's for the birds, like I'm not with this at all. Man, so, okay, so bang. The team was gonna do training camp in Bormio, in the mountains. So I came, they left. Yeah. There was nobody on the team to help me get things done. So I had no car. <laughs> I only had, I had a box of pasta. <laughs> <laughs> I had one thing of tomato sauce. Yeah. I just swear to God, the you whole really thing. Thugging it. Yo, I was <laughs> thugging it with my pops too. So I'm like, yo, this is crazy. Like, you know what I mean? I'm yeah. walking around and that transition right there, was like, it was crazy. Yeah, it was crazy. My career, you know, I played in Japan. I was telling you, mm -hmm. it took me three weeks to get used to that. You know, it's like, a, you got to change the AM and BM. Yeah. It's a whole yeah. day. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. it's like, I'm like, bro, I woke up in Japan. I'm like, where am I at, bro? One thing, like, a lot of teams don't even, like, really give you opportunities to really get adjusted because like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah. yeah, like you'll be like, yeah. you like, you really feel like you need like a, you know, to get adjusted. Like you really need like an adjustment period. Mm -hmm. And I think like a lot of people don't realize that like coming overseas, like it's a, it's a different time zone, like a different culture, different everything. So you really need an adjustment period. I think people gotta understand like the sacrifices we make though. Yeah. So like, you need to come home. And I'm like, man, then you see your son like daddy, you know, he knows, you know, my he's 11. He knows at the time, like he watched TV and sees it. It was like, Dad, you need to come home right now. So it's like, you kind of question yourself. How do you how do you explain that to your to your child? Like, you know, I'm the reason I'm doing this. I'm doing this for you. Like, I'm doing this so like, you know, to, to give you, you know, a better life, give you a better opportunities than I had growing up. Like, that's like, a, how do you explain that? Like, no, I just tell him like, son, this is this is what a dad, a father is supposed to do. Supposed to take care of his 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 nest, his home. Supposed to take care of his kids. 
So, um, and I think he understands that, you know, uh, especially after last year. Last year was the only t the time he cried, but he felt it. For you, like, you got three kids, boys, like three boys, like boys that like want to be around you, want to be around a dad. And it's like, I don't think, like you said, like people really understand like that sacrifice. Like you literally like are over here because you're trying to make a better life for them. Bro, it was tough for me, bro. Especially early on, it was very, very tough. It still is, you know, but like having, you know, wifey that support system and her, her mother, and keeping an understanding, and obviously me for my kids, like she always, every time I talk to them on the phone, you know, my wife's mother always be like, you know why daddy's uh, overseas? That's important. And the other one's like, he's over there playing basketball, he's yeah. doing what he gotta do. So they know, bro, like now they know, and I installed that into them, and it's like, obviously it's still hard though, but they know they know, I'm cool with that. Yeah.